Elements of modern music. It's, it's very got true. The, the shredding guitar. The it's shredding got the, guitar. The, the, the bass. It's got, the, it's got everything. That song is really all you need in a song. Anything yeah. more than that song is just excessive. I quit music now. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, the perfect song just got played. Why do we need to do this episode? It's, it's yeah. been we done. To, we need to shorten all of our songs. <laughs> but before we do that, now this. Tonight, we welcome the Freak Accident to the stage of the Phoenix Theater. The Freak Accident is headed by Ralph Spite, a 30-plus year veteran of the stage whose band Victim's Family remains one of Tom Gavvy's favorite true. groups of all time. That's true. Tonight, we'll learn about the Freak Accident's new release, Misfortune Teller, and later, they will play a collection of songs from that album. Please welcome to the program, The Freak Accident. Welcome. Well, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you kindly. I suppose I should verify that the songs you're playing later are from the new album? Yes. Okay, all good. Of the songs well, we don't need to re-record that. That we're then. playing later <laughs> are on the new record. Are on the new record. This band has described itself as anthems for the depressed. Right. <laughs> would you say that that's a different vibe from Victims Family? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, Anthem for the Depressed is the name of a song that's on the first Freak Accident record, which was kind of a... Uh, it started out as a bedroom project, like I was really getting into digital recording and things like that. And the, the, the album sort of started taking shape in my bedroom and then I had to go like rent a studio because like I was getting louder and louder and louder. So like I want to start to do live drums, but really it kind of began as sort of a singer or songwriter thing. And so it was really a lot of songs about depression and heartbreak and, you know, uh, it's basically everything that I was writing that didn't fit in Victim's Family, so. <laughs> so you would say that the, the, uh, the, the emotional source material for this band is, is a little bit different than Victim's Family. Yeah, and I, I guess the thing that I like to think about is I think that the hardest thing to do in music is to play uh, a song on an acoustic guitar and sing in front of 10 people. I think that like playing in a rock band in front of 10,000 is much easier. Like it's so much easier to play like in a loud bit, like to hide behind volume, to hide behind, you know, electronics, to hide behind all those things. But like to be vulnerable, you know, in that way, yeah. like <clears throat> to hear people like hear how you actually sing, kind of like what we were talking about <laughs> with the, with the live recording. It's like, oh, this is how I actually sing. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I love that you uh, kind of cite this, the beginning of this band as kind of a singer-songwriter thing. Right, because it's totally not that now. <laughs> no, not, no, but but it, you've also actually, described the new album. It, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was going to say, it. actually, it is, though. I mean, you, right. you spend a lot of time with the lyrics. Uh, there's a theme that keeps rolling through this album that uh, absolutely singer-songwriter. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a second. And, and to that point, also, you describe the new album, which doesn't have a blues sound to it. Right. That's kind of like a blues album. Right. It, it's, you know, you, you said vulnerable. I mean, this does feel like a more vulnerable project for you than a Victims album. Yeah, totally. Um, and this, you know, uh, bad news for the Victims family fans, because this will oh, be no. the la probably one of the, the last references I make on this episode. This is the freak accident episode, <laughs> not the victim's episode. Yeah. But, you know, you were on this show on stage uh, four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And the victim's family um, 30th anniversary was mm -hmm. that yeah. year. And that, that episode was really like a look back at your life in music. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this episode is more of like a look at the present and kind of a look forward because this album is that. Right. Would you agree with that? I would, absolutely would. And that's, that's, that's the thing. It's like one of my constant uh, things like I, I love doing victims family and I would love for us to like keep producing music. The thing is for me, it's really hard. Like I, I just think about music all the time. Like I'm writing music all the time. I have to keep doing that. And so like one thing about that band is that we just can't get together. I mean, it's just like, it's just logistically really challenging. You're three right? busy guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're all busy guys. Yeah. Right. And, and so like, it's nobody's fault or whatever it's just you know it's like it's life right yeah. so for me like i feel my my main loyalty is to the music that's coming out of my my head out of my heart like that's being like transmitted you know like i have to i have to do that stuff you know so no matter who's listening you know okay to that point then uh, misfortune teller is the new album by mm -hmm. the freak accident came out in august of 2018 mm -hmm. and i feel like it really captures that 
it captures a, a period in your life and some circumstances that happen. Yeah. So, you know, broadly, if you want to share with us kind of the circumstances surrounding the writing of this new album, I think sure. that'd be great. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> anytime I get divorced, there's usually a new freak accident record. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's happened twice in my life now. Yeah. And uh, no, I mean, so, you know, in all seriousness, yeah, like uh, I was in a 10 year relationship that ended really abruptly. Although, you know, and I, I kind of make reference to it in the lyrics is that it's like if, if my eyes were open, I, I could have seen it happening. You know what I mean? So it's like, as I mentioned to you in the email, you know, before the show. Like a lot of it is about just kind of stripping away your illusions or, or, or just, you know, waking up from like what you thought was things are and then seeing things as they actually are. And, uh, and you know, there's grief and there's all these, you know, all these things that you face. And then, uh, you know, getting older too. So one of the things that comes up is just, you know, mortality and uh you know depression i've certainly like had you know done a lot of time with depression you know i'm uh i'm a sober person too so like for a long time and so i'm really a prey to that like sort of depression and it really runs through it's like this it's like this uh self-sabotaging thread that kind of runs through everything like to, like if there's a uh um, like a reverse, in, like if a band breaks up or somebody leaves the band or something like I, I take it way more personally than the normal person would, you know what I mean? Like I'll sit there and just like, like be bummed out about it for like a couple of years and not do anything. So that's one of the things that like to, to, um, one of the things with this record to me, like just on a personal level is to just like keep going. It was so, it's so hard for me to come out and like say all these things. Like I was talking to you about like, Oh, I don't, you know, I didn't put the lyrics in the CD or whatever. It's like kind of a space issue, but it's also kind of like, I don't, you know, I don't know. It's all, it's all real close, real vulnerable. I mean, there's stuff, there's freak accident songs that are recorded that I've never released because I'm just like, ah, oh, too personal. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm hoping to like, you know, eventually dump all those things out and uh, and let people see what's what's the, the whole broad, you know, spectrum of it, because it's not it's not I'm not stuck on one stylistic angle. You know, I never have been really, but <laughs> it gives you a lot of freedom. Yeah, you know, it really does. So uh, what's tougher divorce or losing a band member? <laughs> uh, I mean, divorce for sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'll second that one. Yeah, 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 for sure. You want to third that? I can only imagine. Oh. No divorce for me, <laughs> but basically, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a many divorces. Do you feel like um, you, you said uh, you, that you had, you know, illusions? You know, you're going through life with mm -hmm. illusions. Um, do you feel like you've come out of the other end of that transition, or do you feel like you're still in it? I mean, I think that is life, right? Like we're always waking up, you know, hopefully. I mean, it's like, um, uh, I mean, as you're, if you're staying conscious in your life, you're like kind of seeing more and more stuff about yourself and it's kind of like, you know, and then you're, you're sort of living with it, you know? And so I, th I just think that that's, that's just the process. I think that's one of the things I'm learning about, just like, just keep going. You know, because to me, again, like my loyalty comes back down to um, to music like uh, it like I'm, I'm like more loyal to the songs than I am to whoever's playing them. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like it's like the songs are like are, are what need like they need to come out like in some way some form like if it's not this band like i'm gonna be you know playing it with like a uh like a acoustic guitar on the corner or something you know well and music's been the one constant i would assume for you absolutely you right know? yeah i mean Every, I, everything else you've seen come and go i mean you've been playing music for almost 40 years now yeah right, right exactly. but i mean that's the one constant yeah no i mean i think i think i just i'm not i, I can't put it aside like i'm just i mean i don't know if i need to always do you know, touring and shows and all those kind of things, but I really love doing it, you know? And, um, I mean, I still have something to say. That's, that's really my, my point is that it's like, um, I mean, it's a little bit frustrating because 
I, I mean, I don't want to get cynical about like the music business, right? But pretty much people decide what you're all about after your first record. <laughs> it's pretty much been my, uh, has pretty much been my experience. Um, and if you look at it, the bands that have had like really long arcs of their careers, like most of those never really changed that much unless they had like totally great artistry. You know what I mean? Like Bowie, right? Like Bowie could remake himself all the time. At, right up until his death you know ACDC though like never changed ever right and <laughs> like never which was great well, the Ramones never you know like all that stuff like never changed right so if you've got like if there's a bunch of stuff in the well that you can draw from and you can keep going to it and finding new things that's I think why I want to concentrate on different things all the time it's like and then I get bored of stuff too, right? So you sharing this personal stuff, I would assume that's an evolution for you. You know, when you look at the you of the 80s and the 90s and the you now. Yeah, I mean, how can it not be, how can the things that you're writing not be like sort of an autobiography? You know what I mean? Like I'm always, um, like after the fact, I'll sort of like be looking at like analyzing things that I've said and be like, <laughs> I, was, I was really trying to solve something in my own mind. You know, because I mean, it's not like victim's family was never like, oh, you know, I'm just like um, exploring my inner landscape. You know what I mean? But I think um, I'm less, I'm, I'm not angry. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm angry about, but like there's a lot more emotional gears is kind of like what I'm trying to say. And that's, that's what I want to do musically too, right? Like I would just want the the musical to reflect the, you know, what's, what's like, what's going on now, you know, like, and so back to your point of, yeah, it's about the future. I mean, I've wanted to, <laughs> I've wanted to say out loud for a long time, like nostalgia is the death of art. You know, it's like, I mean, it's great that like, oh, I've been doing this so long. I like this fucking thing. Oh, this record got me through like high school and all that stuff. It's like, I, I absolutely love when talking to people about like how much the music that I did before has meant to them, you know, and which is why I keep doing it, you know, and, but, but, you know, if you're, again, if you're aware, if you're conscious, if you're, you know, creative, like that's, it's not enough, like, because we're constantly working out what's happening now, you know, like, it's kind of like we, uh, you know, we dream every night, right? Like our subconscious is trying to trying to assimilate everything we've we're 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 doing, you know, like during the day, and so, like, I th uh, it's like that too. And so that was it. another thing about Misfortune Teller was like trying to get into more like dream type states, and you know, like exploring death and exploring, you know loss and power dynamics and relationships and like, you know, and, um, and me not always being like, you know, see the, the problem when you start getting into that stuff is that like, it's very easy for me to start writing from the perspective of like, I'm the aggrieved victim, but <laughs> it's much more difficult to, to write from the, the place of like, um, yeah, I totally played a role in screwing this up, you know, and, and, um, yeah, so that, that's kind of my challenge, you know, kind of like tell the truth, although it's the reason why I like compared it to a blues record is it's like, it's my story, you know what I mean? It's like, I get to write that story. Like it's, it, but it's just my version of the facts. Yeah. But, and if you're being honest, you're not always the hero, you know, if you're no, really being reflective absolutely, yeah. and that can be painful to, to think about. That. Yeah, totally. Uh, okay. And, and so we talk about that and this is a personal question. I can cut it out if, if it's no good, but okay. what, what changed inside you as a result of this period? You know, the divorce happened, you wrote this album, this album seems to be like a marker for this painful period. Right. And I'm just curious, like, what did you learn from this time of reflection about yourself that's a really interesting question. Um, should definitely cut out all this silence. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good because people are listening and they're like, fuck, this is going to be an answer. Wow, man. Yeah, no, I want it to be an answer. What did I learn? Well, I think that...
not so much about what I learned, but more about how I wanted to be able to express it was to be able to talk about that, like, I'm not the hero. Like, talk about kind of the ugly shit that comes out of me. You know what I mean? Like, kind of be able to put that out and um, and just, like, I mean, like, obviously, I have, like, a long relationship and love with Rob Wright of No Means No, right? And one of the things I've always loved about Rob is that, like, he just fucking would just say, he would say shit that was, like, totally socially unacceptable in this way, like, he was the hero of this, like, fucking James Joyce novel or something, you know what I mean? Like, like he was the drunken fucking philosopher of... Uh, of you know like and Rob would say some shit like some of the lyrics that I listen to on Nomi's Now I'm like Jesus Christ dude like <laughs> do you really have to talk about that you know it's like but like it's coming out of him like it's the truth you know and that's that's kind of more how I wanted to be able to relate uh, to people because I um and that's difficult for me, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm really, I'm always thinking a lot about how what I'm saying is going to land. And oftentimes I'm not thinking about it enough, you know? So sometimes I, you know, hear back about it. Um, so I think for myself what I learned is, uh, I mean, on a personal level, you know, like, um, you have to let go of people. I mean, you have to. Like, nobody owes you anything. No, nobody owns anybody else. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and nobody owes you the... Like, no one's required to work it out with you. You know what I mean? Like, um, and... Like, everything is... Um, you know, we have to keep showing up for our relationships and be in them like every day, right? Like we have to, we have to be present in those things. We can't go to sleep like, oh, all right, I got that part, <laughs> part of my life solved, you know? Like, it's like, um, and, you know, as a creative person, as a musician that works, like, I can tend to get really caught up in my own selfish shit, you know? I mean, I do like, I'm really obsessed with this shit, you know, like, like I think about music all the fucking time, you know, and, uh, and that's, that's hard for somebody else. So Th that was exactly where my mind went when you said that. Yeah. It was like, it's hard to have this life coexist with that life. Right. Exactly. And, and you know, you, you only have a finite amount of time. So I think there's an inclination amongst, I mean, I, I feel like maybe at least the three of us are similar in that way. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, everything seems to be functioning fine over here. So I'm going to go over here and do this thing that I really love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it breaks down completely, well, I'll, yeah, I'll come back and I'll fix it. But yeah. Yeah, that's not the way you have a yeah. functioning relationship with a person. Right. And it's a, hum know? it's humbling really to admit that because it's sort of like, cause it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, yeah. Well, cause humbling. It, when you, well, <laughs> when you admit that, then it, you know, the if you want to use the word blame it goes squarely at you you know yeah. you, you but you, but but again this comes back to what i'm talking about it's like it's real yeah right like it, we just come back to okay you know i i'm going to be with myself for the rest of my life no matter who's with me you know and uh and um i mean again i, I want to think like deeply about how i'm treating people around me, you know, like I, it's just, you know, it's just not right. I mean, one of the things I think about being able to summon up those kind of like images and, you know, to be involved in music is like, you have to feel things deeply. And so like, I feel deeply about the people that I get involved with, you know, and, uh, and, and then, um, and you just, uh, I think w one of the things about this record and just, you know, 
these songs in this band in general is that it's about that. It's about looking at looking at you know the flaws looking at my flaws <laughs> it's really fun for me <laughs> we that's love fun to, for other we people we love to hear it you know <laughs> <laughs> but that, again that's uh, that's why i compare it to a blues record you know what i mean like it's it's like in that sense i think it is a blues record you, you've said that reading the book when things fall apart inspired one of the songs on this album yeah goodbye hope let's talk about that yeah, uh, so I'm not like a Buddhist, but I really like Pema Chodron. I've read a lot of her things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I meditate, uh, but it's like, um, and she just uh, has this thing in that book where she just talks about abandoning hope, and I just kind of like it really resonated with, with where I was at. Like, And what she's talking about is just this idea that... Um, you know, we're always hoping for a better future or a better past or a better, you know, outcome or like that it's going to turn out like the way I want it to and all those things. And this becomes like this thing that we hang on to that ultimately um, becomes disappointing, you know, like life eventually just becomes disappointing because I'm wishing it would be different, you know. And um, and so obviously I was feeling pretty um pretty in tune with that idea and it actually to uh you know so that that song just kind of like it just poured out you know like I just started writing it out and I mean one of the things about the lyrics in that tune is that um they really uh you know there's there's actually a lot of idioms about hope that you can sort of turn on their ear so if you like look at the lyrics you know like i cross my heart and i hope to die you know <laughs> like uh all these things about hope and um and then originally i didn't the, the, there's the lyric about like is so it's basically sort of like goodbye hope uh you know hello death right so um Originally, I wasn't really talking about like hello death, but it just seemed like such a great kind of flip because um, that's another thing she talks about and a lot of other Buddhist philosophers talk about, too. It's just the the idea of like embracing your own death. Right. And, you know, I'm at that age where you're thinking about it more and more. <laughs> <laughs> it comes up more and more, you know, like, and, you know, more and more people around me are dying, you know, my parents are gone, like, uh, and friends and, you know, like we're, you know, we're all losing people all the time. Right. And so, uh, and as you get older, it's, it's more and more intense. And it's like more about like, you know, like three people this week from cancer is like, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? Like, it's just really gnarly. So, I mean, what's it like to, embrace the idea that we're all going to die right what it like how um how can that actually be how can that actually be liberating right it's like so if i let go of the idea that it's like i'm going to live forever like then right now becomes really interesting you know like and, and but that's also one of the reasons why i'm so driven like about music right you know like because i still that that's one of the things that was kind of lighting a fire under me with this record it's just like you know, I got a lot more, like, there's there's another record right behind this one. You know, there's more. <laughs> there's more. There's also stuff that w was recorded and hasn't been released. So, like, you know, there's, like, I, I, w I want to dump all this stuff out. It's just, um, you know, it's like the money to actually produce everything. It's always a, so that's, it's always that, you know. At some point, I probably just get so desperate, I just put it all out for, you know, free download. Like, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's interesting how it dovetails, you know, the, right. the despair of your situation with the divorce and just having to look at ugly truths about yourself, but then also this, you know, evolution of uh, your viewpoint on death, which right. is I have a finite amount of time. And I don't know, it seems like those two things at a certain point have uh, overlap in this album and it becomes, you abandon the idea of hope a little bit, but also... There's a, there's actually a hope that comes there's out. There's a hope of, that comes out yeah, of yeah, realization yeah. that you don't have forever, so you better right. make the most of what you've got. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I think that's and I think that makes it a much more interesting just for a much more interesting philosophy of life, a much more interesting life, you know? Yeah. Like and also um I don't know. You know, it's also 
makes it that uh, it's just having a much more intimate relationship with friends and, you know, and people around me, you know, like, and just really enjoying people a lot more, you know, like you just drop so much of like, uh, I mean, I just think about myself, like in my twenties and stuff, like I have so much to prove and like, so angry, like as a teenager and twenties and even into my thirties <laughs> and forties, you know, it's like, like, you know, like always, you know, thinking like, uh, I got all this shit to prove, you know, and everything. And then you just get to this point, like in your life where you're just like, you know, I just really enjoy, I like playing music with these guys, you know, I like playing music with the other people I play music with. Like, I enjoy my relationships. I enjoy, you know, my girlfriend. I enjoy, like, my friends. I enjoy, you know, and um, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a point of being in the moment when you're hoping for something. You're right. looking forward. You're not in the moment. Right. And when you're trying to prove yourself, you're almost looking backwards. You're still not in the moment. You're trying to prove where you've been, who you were, right. who you are. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, so you're taking yourself out of the moment. And, uh, and I think some of the greatest moments we can have is when we're up on stage, when you're playing. Totally. And you're in that moment. Oh, my God. Yeah. How much power is that? Yeah. And then it's nothing about hope. Yeah. It's all about now. It's, this is it where is. I am. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things about, like, uh, about playing the songs, and we're kind of like, you know, well, how was that one? I was like, yeah, little things, you know, like, a uh, little thing. It's like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, proving yourself is sort of like, one of, one of the problems that comes out of that is perfectionism, you know. What I think is really interesting is that when you were in your 20s and 30s, you know, this feeling like you had something to prove, that was like the, the rocket fuel, I feel right. like. You know, Absolutely. like that's what got you to keep going forward. And and a transition happened at some point in your life. And now it seems that what what, what makes you go forward is just the, the desire to like share and be vulnerable and make something that is... Mm -hmm. I mean, representative of, I mean, if of I'm honest, man, I still got to prove so I still got something to prove, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't, but, but it's, I mean, it's in a different way. The percentages it's, have shifted. It seems, you know, I mean, you're not 20 and maybe, do you think you're as brash as you were when you were no. 20? No. And no. The other question is who, who are you trying to prove it to? Right. <laughs> no one but myself. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's so sort of that. I think that's what you figure yeah. out. You know, I think that's what you figure out. It's like, uh, you know, when you're, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's what you figure out. It's yeah. just sort of like nobody really cares, man. Yeah. You're just being an asshole. <laughs> just calm down, you know. <laughs> Jeez, I've been watching Ralph play for what almost thirty years. This is the most I've ever heard him talk. <laughs> Far out. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the coda right there. And uh, you know, it's it's uh, uh, what's it? Ten thousand miles of bad road. Um, anybody can jump into that tune and relate on their own levels with that. Mm -hmm. And actually, most of your stuff uh, that I read today is, is exactly that. Uh, what you've got going on at, at the time in, you, in your life, you can find a piece of that in, in everything you've written here. And, uh, and that's the way songs go down for so many people. You, you have an idea of what you think it means at the time to you, and somebody else will come up with an entirely different concept. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah, that touches them on that level. Yeah, that's actually a really yeah. good point about yeah. it as well, you know, yeah. because I'm always, obviously, you know, like, I'm also spending a lot of time, like, sort of overthinking, like, well, okay, well, how's this going to land, you know? Yeah. Like, oh. Uh, well, before we conclude, Ralph, you have anything else to say about this project? Oh. Uh, Looking forward, you say you already have another album behind Yeah, we're working one? on new stuff. Like, I actually, you know, that's the thing that, um, yeah, I really, uh, really look forward to, like, you know, let's just be in the room every every week, you know. Well, I'll just say, I hope for your sake, it's a happy album because that <laughs> will say a lot about what the next year or two yeah, looks depressing, like, depressing, You know, depressing music, that doesn't mean you're unhappy, you know. Like, writing depressing music is really oh, a great so outlet for depressing. happy people. Cathartic. That's true. <laughs> Wasn't your experience with this album, but yes, <laughs> it can be done. No, I mean, actually, I think the thing was is, uh, I think it was actually really important to, you know, to demarcating that stuff like you know Absolutely. like you said before it, it's sort of that is kind of the journey like to me these records you know they're 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 like little they're you know marks in my life like this is 
Ne- not maybe not necessarily about this chapter points, know, but the chapters. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I once heard Lou Reed talk about like that his autobiography is every record he's ever made. You know, yeah. like he he talked about like the whole thing. It's just one piece of work. You know, even the songs that he wrote as like a as a paid songwriter all the way up until the end. You know, and I, I really like that idea that it's like sort of like you're writing your autobiography the whole time. You know, so well. You once joked in a posting online that uh, <laughs> this band, which is the freak accident, uh, it's like uh, it's the side project of Victim's Family. And uh, why shouldn't a completely unknown band have a side project? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just want to say that you're a legend on this stage and you have meant so much to the thousands of people that have seen you play here and elsewhere. And I know a lot of them and I know you know a lot of them, too. And we're, we're just thrilled that we got to document this project here tonight because yeah. this is another side to you. And uh, I hope that a lot of those people who've seen you play in other bands come check this out as well because right. it, it's a great project. Yeah. And we really appreciate the glimpse you've given, you know, into your life, which I know is not always comfortable. It's not always easy to be vulnerable, but it's what makes a good album, I think, and what makes a good episode. So great. Thank you so much for, for sharing all that. Thanks, Jim. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and, you guys. You know, Thanks. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Yep. And, and, and in just a moment, we're going to get to see these songs be played because the freak accident is going to play a set of music. Yeah. Thanks again, guys. <laughs>
I got much better things.